Let's go look at the animals. Come on. Come on, Salem. Let's go. Come on, Salem. <laughs> Come on. Two years ago, we had a huge coyote problem. And although our 12-year-old goat, Luna, was very brave in scaring away the coyote, we knew we needed something a little bit scarier than an old goat. And that's why we brought in Salem. She's a giant schnauzer, which is the perfect breed for us because we live in the middle of the city and we couldn't really justify getting a livestock guardian dog for our small acre of land. Giant schnauzers are great for general guarding and that's what we want. Training started with getting her used to all the animals. All right, this is Tilly. Say hi. Not gonna eat those. Not yours. And boy, was it a lot of work, but now we can say she is completely 100% animal safe, no matter the size of the animal. When she hit about a year old, we had the coyote come back, and we were happy to see Salem very much on alert and ready to go after it. However, many trainers told us to wait until she's two years old before we let her confront a coyote. But now she's almost two, and we're ready to begin the training. So first we put this up, Lydia, and we had Salem, we told her come and she jumped through it. She that did. so tiny though. I know, that's so tiny, but she jumped through it. So then, now dad finished welding this thing, and now we're gonna see if Salem, now this is a little bit bigger. We made it bigger because we wanted to train her first and then we'll see if we need to make it smaller. And hopefully the goats don't jump through. They say they won't, but <laughs> they I, I don't know. That's small. A goat's going to be way Yeah, and also because that. there's no ledge, that's the most important thing. Yeah. If you put a ledge right here or a thick 2 by 4 it gives them that leverage to hop through. Yeah, some people would do a 2 by 4 but that'd be a ledge. Could Finnick jump through it? Yes. Because he can do anything, but that's because he's little. So step one, after all of the animal training, step one is to get her to the other side of the fence so she can actually reach the pasture. Now we did do a little bridge, like I think it was like a year ago or six months ago, and that's okay, but then she couldn't get back. So we really need something she can go through. And those electronic doggy doors are hella expensive. They're like $500 and they don't get good reviews, so we don't want to waste our money on it. This is the best. Thing, I think they're called jump gates and goats and sheep are supposed to not be able to get through it We'll see if that's uh, true. All right moment of truth Come on come on come on come on Sit. she's gonna need a little more training Woo! She just needs a lot of, a lot of training. Practice. Don't worry, these are dog safe hot dogs. Kevin, watch the goats figure it out in like two seconds. <laughs> no. Well, she seems to like to stand on it. <laughs> when I throw a, a fetch stick, she, she jumps through. Oh yeah? Oh, good job. Good job, Salem. Eventually you'll get it. October is moving fast and life is getting busier. Ultrasounds are gonna start soon on all the does. Lydia's got a bunch of marching band competitions. We've got a wedding to attend. We've got family coming into town. And if all works out, I just might be able to make it to a goat show at the end of this month. So if you're like us and you have a packed schedule this fall, go ahead and give HelloFresh a try. 
HelloFresh has a bunch of different meals with a weekly selection of 30 plus recipes and 70 plus convenience items, all delivered to your door. They also have a line of kid-friendly recipes and they are picky eater proof, so they're perfect for families looking to try something new this school year. You can easily customize your meals by swapping out proteins or sides or even adding a protein to a veggie meal. This makes it so much easier to tailor it to your needs. HelloFresh's recipes include pre-portioned ingredients, and that means less prep for you and less wasted food. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code WEEDEM65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Okay, so I'm out here in the backyard to camp out tonight because Salem, our giant schnauzer, is a year and 10 months old now and she's ready to sleep out here with the animals and protect them. So I am going to teach her how to do it. So we've got her bed and my bed. The goats have come to sleep with us now. <laughs> <laughs> They're on Salem's bed and uh, looks like we're gonna have a fun night out here. As long as you guys don't get on my bed, we're fine. Are you gonna listen and watch those goats? Good job. Well, sun's coming up. We made it. Slept pretty good. Salem did really well the first couple hours. She went around the yard and checked on all the animals, smelling everything and make sure everyone was good. And then finally about 3 a.m. she came to bed and it was kind of cold. <laughs> she bit some of the blankets and pulled them on her a little bit. Keeping an eye on those chickens. Turkey. She stays vigilant. You want us to come in? Doing okay? Are you okay, Tilly? <laughs> so I think all six goats are bred, but we won't know for sure until they're ultrasounds, which aren't really for a couple weeks. We want to wait till 40 days so we can really count and know how many are inside of them. But none of them have come this chicken. None of them have come back into heat, so we assume they're bred until the ultrasound. Let's make some beautiful artisan bread in the pizza oven. If you've ever had trouble making bread, just find a recipe that has all the measurements by weight. That way you know you'll get the exact amount and it eliminates like 99% of potential mistakes. This recipe was pretty simple and straightforward. We just mixed up the dough, let it rise, and then we got it ready to go in the oven. I think I let this rise a little bit too long, but it still worked out, so I guess we're good. Getting the pizza oven to the right temperature was probably the hardest part, just because I had to time everything to work exactly in my favor. But we got it in right at the perfect time when the stones are 500 degrees and the walls are about 450, and we let it cook with our broken cover. That blew over in the wind one day. But about 30 minutes later, it's beautiful. I just realized why it took longer. It's because I forgot to close the chimney. So definitely gotta remember to do that next time, but it smells really good. So I'm excited to eat it. Let's open this and see how it is. Oh, got a little burned on the bottom. It's a little bit burned on the bottom, but that's okay. Super soft. Okay, that was a pretty easy first try. Now I need to move on to much harder recipes. All right, 
now that we've got Salem trained to jump into the pasture, right, sort of? Yes. And now that we've got her trained to sleep in the pasture, which actually wasn't a hard thing because her favorite thing in the world is to be in the pasture. Yeah. So that was easy. Now we are gonna train her to catch the scent of a coyote and do oh, sort of an alert, alert right? Us. Yes, so we have a professional trainer. Yeah, so we brought a professional by and she gave us some really good advice and did some training with Salem. Nope. Yes! Good girl. He's a good dog. This is confusion. Yeah. She's she's actively looking at yeah. my hands, trying to figure me out. Yes! Good job! Okay. We get the game now. Alright. She actually lasted a lot longer than okay. most dogs do. Okay. I typically wouldn't get to that alerting step, okay. but she let me anyway. So even with her running around crazy, she actually did really good. So once Salem caught the scent and like figured out what we were trying to get her to do, then Kevin started doing it with different cups or bowls that had, uh, one had a scent, right? And one didn't. Yeah, so she has to distinguish the difference and alert us. One has the coyote smell in a cotton ball, and one doesn't. Okay, she has to go to the right one. Get it! Speed! Speed! Good girl! Mix them up again. Mix them up again. Get it! Good girl! Just have to keep this smelly one. Somewhere where the smell cannot infiltrate other stuff. What is that? Oh, that smells good. Okay, Kevin is going out behind the mulberry tree out there. He's gonna go hide the doll. And then I'm gonna release Salem and she's gonna go find it. Okay. <laughs> She's sniffing. Ah, oh, she got it! <laughs> right there, that's where a coyote would be. <laughs> Salem, go get it! Good girl, go get it! She got it! Good job! Now, this is just the beginning of her training. We still have a lot to do, especially with the trainer, as we try to teach Salem to alert when she smells the coyote. Because we want to be sure that we're aware. <laughs> we don't want her out here just fighting the thing alone. So we're going to keep trying, but right now I feel pretty safe knowing that she can at least get to the pasture because it's time to let Luna retire from her coyote guarding. She also likes to still swim in the pond. Oh. <laughs> She'll be barking at those coyotes because she loves that smell. She wants to eat it. Okay, thanks for joining us in today's video, guys. If you want to see the video when we first got cute little Salem, it's like the most adorable thing ever. You can go ahead and click right here.